Let's look graphically at a comparison between factoring and completing the square. We're given that we have an axis of symmetry at x equals 1 and that the x-intercepts or solutions happen to be 4 units left and right of the axis of symmetry. Let's graph that. So that's kind of cool. Already I have my x-intercepts, my solutions, my roots, my zeros, etc. Now let's take a look at this if it were in factored form. If my x-intercepts are at negative 3 and 5, then I know that inside opposite. So y equals x plus 3, x minus 5. Next, let's look algebraically at finding the solutions. So to find the x-intercepts, the solutions, y equals 0. Surprise, we got x equals negative 3 and x equals 5 for our solutions. Next, let's take it to standard form and algebraically look at completing the square. Same idea for the solutions, I want to replace y with 0. We want to solve this using completing the square. Of course we're going to finish and find the solutions, but let's pause just a moment, look at what we have graphically. I noticed that we have this 1 and the axis of symmetry is right there at 1 equals 1. Hmm, what else do you notice? Well, 4 and it's plus 4 and minus 4. Well, wait a second. The axis of symmetry minus 4, negative 3. The axis of symmetry plus 4, 5. Hmm, interesting. Now let's talk about what happens when a isn't 1 and it's not convenient to divide out the a like we did in our last lesson. So this will work for all standard form equations, whether a is 1 or negative 3 or 17. Remember, a, b, and c are constants, so they are values. x is, of course, the variable, and we're going to solve this using completing the square for x. So the first thing I need to do is divide out the a that's with my x squared. Let's complete the square. Subtract c divided by a to the other side. Well, this is a little bit different. Normally we have a value right in front of x and we just go, oh, what, what plus itself equals that number? Like if it was negative 20x, then it'd be negative 10 plus negative 10. With the coefficient being b divided by a, I need to take half of that. Well, that's interesting, b divided by 2a. So far, so good. Now we have to determine what are we adding to both sides? Well, remember that we always multiplied these together. So b divided by 2a times itself. Okay, so if you're understanding now that I did b divided by 2a times itself to get b squared over 4a squared, you're doing fabulous. Just once again, keep with me. I chose to use commutative property of addition to rewrite that sum as b squared divided by 4a squared minus c divided by a. At this point, I'm thinking, hmm, it'd be nice if I could rewrite that as one fraction. Well, I can, I just need a common denominator. I was running out of room, so I had to rewrite the problem. What would I do now? Square root, square root. Square rooting a fraction. I can square root the numerator separate from the denominator. The numerator is a difference. You're not allowed to square root each term. The square root of four is two. The square root of a squared is a. Whew, almost there. All we have to do now is subtract the b divided by 2a over, and we have solved for x, regardless of if a is one or not. Okay, however, let's do a little bit of thinking here. Do you remember above when we had the 1 in our completing the square equation and that was the axis of symmetry? Hmm, look at this guy. Well, that's how we find the axis of symmetry from standard form. So that's my axis of symmetry. And then the 4 was how far it was from the axis of symmetry. Did any of you notice what we just figured out using completing the square? You know, I think it's always fun to understand that these formulas weren't just handed down to us from on high. They actually came from math. 
Now Miss Ryan's gonna come in and just make sure we know how to use it. Wow, so now that we know where the quadratic formula comes from, we can use it to start solving quadratics. So let's look at this first one here. We've got a quadratic in standard form, so if it helps you to write ax squared plus bx plus c above it so we can see what our a, b, and c terms are, you could. Okay, now remember, a, b, and c are the constants, so I'm not gonna take x when I look at a, I'm not gonna take x when I look at b. So our quadratic formula goes, I'm gonna use this one right here, x equals negative b, so I have seven for b, so negative seven, plus or minus a big giant square root, b squared, so seven squared, minus four times a times c, so four times four times three, all over, all over, 2a, so 2 times 4. 7 squared is 49 minus 4 times 4 times 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12 times 4 is 48. So minus 48 all over 2 times 4, which is 8. Square root of 1 is 1, so I'm going to have negative 7 plus or minus 1 divided by 8. So negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8 divided by 8 is negative 1, so there's one of my solutions. And then negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6 divided by 8. Ooh, I can simplify that. So divide the numerator and denominator by 2, and I can simplify it to negative 3 fourths. So there's my two solutions. Now, there's a catch here though, okay? Quadratic formula, not that bad, right? It just requires a lot of steps, which means there's a lot of room for little mistakes, so being really careful there. Did I have to use the quadratic formula on this problem? No, no! I totally could have used crisscross method and factored this one. So we kind of want to put quadratic formula on our back burner, and if we have to use it, it's a good resource, but if we don't have to use it, then we use factoring or completing the square to solve. So for number two, what do I need to do first here? Oh yeah, has to equal zero so that I can start solving. So move that nine over. Do I have to use the quadratic formula on this one or will it factor? Okay, it doesn't factor, so let's go ahead and give the quadratic formula a try. Take a moment, plug it into your quadratic formula, be really, really careful as you simplify. All right, so I got n equals two plus or minus two root 37 all over eight. Now that was a little weird looking, so I went ahead and wrote my two over eight and then my two root 37 over eight, right? Because that denominator's on both pieces. Then I can see that two divided by eight is gonna simplify to one fourth. And same with this right here, two divided by eight can simplify to one fourth. So my simplified answer is going to be one fourth plus or minus root 37 over four. Now remember that that's two solutions. Okay, time for three. First, we gotta make sure we set it equal to zero, and I'm gonna be a little smart about it and move my 12x and my six over instead of moving my three x squared over. I'd rather have a positive a than a negative a. Hmm, so what do I notice here? I wanna exhaust the better methods first, so like factoring or completing the square. If I start strong, three goes into all three terms, so let's divide out that three. Look at that, it doesn't factor, but a is one, so I can complete the square. Go for it. <laughs> Woo, completed the square and got x equals negative two plus or minus root two, way faster than quadratic formula. Last one, looks like I can't factor or complete the square easily, so quadratic formula is gonna be the good route. Go for it. All right, I got x equals one third plus or minus two root three over three. Now notice that I did split my answer. So right here I wrote two separate fractions. That was just so it'd make it easier to simplify at the end. So you can do that as well. Then when I got to my square root of 432, I knew that that had to simplify. After doing some number crunching, I figured out that 144 times three is 432. So 144 is a perfect square, so 12 root three. Then at this step, you can see I already simplified the six divided by 18 into one third plus or minus 12 root three divided by 18. 
I know it's really tempting to kind of be like, oh, well, I have a three inside the radical. Could I maybe simplify that with the 18? I can't. It's inside a radical. It's protected. We're not allowed to mess with that number. What I can do is simplify the 12 and the 18 because those are both outside the radical. So 12 divided by 18, I can divide the numerator and denominator by six and get two thirds. You know, the other reason I like it split is that we can clearly see what the axis of symmetry is and then how far left and right of that the x-intercepts are. So what would my axis of symmetry be for this problem? One third, x equals one third. Nice.